Hi there, thanks for joining. In last video I have disappointed some people because I showed in that video how you can paint peeling paint on, on a wooden door. Uh, but the rest of the video I just uh, time-lapsed it, I skipped it, the painting of the tiles. So in this video I'm gonna show you that part. And, uh, but first let us look at how you can approach this in general. Now of course every situation is different. When you look at tiles from a great distance you might not even uh, recognize them as tiles. Then maybe you only see a big color plane. Uh, and the closer you get the more details you see of course. We all know of course when we would draw a cross section of these of tiles. You would see that this is a tile and this is a tile and then in between is the joint and the joint often but not always is an indent is a, so it has a depth and uh, well maybe the surface of the of the tiles might be glossy or it might be mud uh, that that depends on the situation as well when a light source hits the tiles like this for instance of course you get here a shadow side in that indent and here this side would catch some light and maybe the indent even casts a cast shadow in the indent of the joint. Is that even a word indent? Yeah okay that is a word. <laughs> so just for the general idea let us assume that this is a tile. So now we see it from close up so you can have light effects on the tiles themselves maybe this is slightly lighter so maybe the tiles are a little bit glossy then we have the the joints you can give them a certain color so like this and then you have the play of light and shadows so if we take this as an example maybe this part of the tile of the joint is in the shadow so it's slightly darker same goes for this one and here as well and here and uh, then it could be that this whole part this joint here also gets a little bit of cast shadow and maybe more extreme than what I do here even but of course when light hits then you also get lighter parts so this would receive light this would receive light and at the sides this is the light part and this would be the light part and maybe it uh, depends on how the light is falling but maybe this is even lighter on the top then it is down there so there are all kinds of variations uh, possible but uh, do you get the idea that's the idea when you see it up close but when you see it from a distance I just sketch a kind of a wall here and a door maybe maybe from a distance like this you don't even see tiles often these textures in the distance are very subtle then you see very small differences in light and dark or in color and light and dark same goes for instance when you see a meadow when you look close up to the grass you see all blades of grass and you see all details in light and dark and uh, that kind of things but in, in the, more in the distance you don't see that anymore you see just a kind of global color uh, planes so on these photographs for instance you see as well that when you see patterns from a distance you can hardly see all the details and also do you see that the, the differences in tonal values are quite close so how light or dark the colors are. So these joints in this picture for instance aren't just titanium white <laughs> they have color. And, uh, and that color is relatively close to the surrounding colors. And that's often the case where you see things more in the distance get closer to each other in color and tonal value. So that's with every subject that you paint. And now let's return to the blue door painting. So we've already painted the peeling paint and you can watch that process in the first video. 
So I'll put the link in the description box below, but now we're gonna focus on the tiles. I clean the palette and we go over to the blue again, the blue of the tiles. And again, I use ultramarine blue, a little bit of titanium white, and I used a touch of yellow to make it a little bit dull again. And I also make a darker variation now. And for the darker variation, I've added more ultramarine blue and a little bit uh, of yellow again as well. But you see, here I add just quite exactly the same color as in the previous layer, but this time it will cover. So, and yeah, to be honest, the first layer quite reasonably covered, to be honest. But uh, here I make this wet with that light blue. Now I grab that darker blue for the darker parts. So here near the doorpost, but also here I see some slightly darker area. And uh, also here around the doorpost. And, uh, well, here I add the lighter color again. This left part is on top. The top part is quite light. And now I add more of the blue of the darker color. So here the downwards, it's slightly darker. You see on the photograph? And this maybe still isn't even dark enough, so I can make it more dark even. So I add more ultra, uh, more uh, magenta and more ultramarine blue. See, immediately gets slightly darker up till here, about here, I guess. And then I wipe it a little bit. So there you have it, slight variations that makes it a little bit more interesting. And of course, this is the base layer for our tiles. Now I'm gonna drop in some joints between the tiles and I've made a very light mixture but it still contains a little bit of that blue mixture that I've used and you don't have to do it right straight away so you can do it a bit sketchy uh, if you want to be absolutely sure if you want to be able to correct your mistakes then maybe it's handy to let that blue dry through and through first before you do this because as long as your paint is wet you can wipe the paint. Uh, I told that earlier in video one I guess uh, but if I would make a mistake now in my case the paint the blue paint isn't dry so then I cannot wipe that white paint off because then I wipe the blue off as well but if you uh, want to have that freedom you say I'm not quite sure about those joints if I'm gonna mess it up maybe well then you can let your canvas dry first and then in a new layer add these light lines and if you mess up you just wipe it off but uh, these lines I do them a little bit uh, sloppy uh, on purpose because they are well, when you look at the photograph you don't see all kind of straight bright lines you see parts of lines and especially at the intersections you see some uh, some more lighter parts sometimes it's more blue sometimes it's more purplish so it doesn't matter that much but just don't put in straight out of the tube pure white lines <laughs> because that will make your painting look flat yeah and of course here for instance at some parts I put relatively a lot of white in and that's no problem but not everywhere so this this is just some some joints that catch a little bit of light then you can do that and Sometimes I add a little bit of red as well, a little bit of a purplish color. You see, it's still not completely white. So now I'm just estimating where the line should go. And 
and then of course another thing we can do here, here you see I add a little bit of uh, red to the mixture so that we get a slightly purplish bluish color in that joint that's what I see on the photograph a little bit I guess uh, but the next thing after that of course are these patterns on these tiles and well I'm a little bit of a lazy painter always uh, I don't have the patience to put in exactly all these details at the right spots you can clearly see patterns so if you want to do it you can do that but I will try to look for a suggestive way of painting these pa uh, patterns now these uh, these joints I will speed this process up up a little bit so now we have a kind of a base color for these joints and then you can start varying so as I said before I'm a lazy painter but I do like to add at some spots a little bit of color differences because it makes the painting look more realistically so a little bit of bluish purplish colors at some spots and at some spots more light some spots it's more darker yeah, but these, these these joints aren't just one color they they differ in color so I'll uh, I'll do that at some spots as well and again if you are a hyper realistic painter you would want to do everything exactly as you see on the photograph but I like to do it a little bit more freely a little bit realistically but also a little bit painterly now for some lightest parts I just grab some pure white And I will slightly speed up this process as well because it is a little bit boring to watch I guess and you get the idea. Here I make a slightly light color for here on the edge of that pole. It's just a tiny detail with a small round brush. I just barely touch the can canvas when you apply little pressure with a small round brush then you get a very thin line if you push harder of course then the bristles will spread and you get a thicker line now I put in the washing lines and I do that again with the round brush a slightly bigger round brush this time and again if you don't want to mess up and you're afraid to do this then make sure that the base layers are completely dry so that you can wipe off the paint if necessary and yeah I always try to see uh, sort of two points the points that I need to connect so um, because sometimes it's difficult to make these lines like this but try to see uh, in advance where you are heading so I went over to this point and that other point of course I had already estimated there now in that line you have variations of light and dark as well and I don't know if it's really necessary but I just drop in a tiny bit of light on top of the line adds a little bit of detail now I uh, do that over here as well slightly lighter and on the knot it's the same you have lighter parts and you have darker parts of course
that was the light part now I'll make the dark part again it's just by uh, uh, adding ultramarine blue and burnt umber it's all kind of grayish again so this this is why eh, I always say the the colors that I use more <laughs> most I think are burnt umber ultramarine and titanium white because I make so much gray colors with these colors you see I have this point and I have that point and I have to connect them so I've touched them already one time and then I just sketchily try to put on that line and for me it works if if I uh, touch these points before I draw the line then it's sort of it, it 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 gets in my system sort of and then I can connect them that's the way I I like to do it but I don't know maybe there are other ways oh by the way this is a cast shadow of that washing line and uh, that was too dark now I lighten it up a little bit but it's just a gray color you see on my palette it's still a gray oops yes my favorite brush is broken now of one of my favorite brushes <laughs> it's completely broken in two I'm so sad but luckily I have another one exactly the same but yeah but here you see I drop in these cast shadows of the washing lines that makes the line stick out and that provides for three-dimensionality and uh, but again these cast shadows are quite light in this painting so here again we have a washing line uh, and that's the first point and where does it have to go to to the knot but it crosses the other line that goes underneath it that's behind the, the the other line so later on we can add a little bit of shadow on this line but first let us connect this line to the knot there we go now there is the point where they uh, overlap each other the lines here and you see that that line in the background has a little bit of cast shadow on it because of that line that's bending is is going in front of it and I can also to make it <laughs> even more spectacular add a slight touch of shadow and here a wasknijper oei 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 what's wasknijper in English ah I've looked it up it's close spin so you learn something every day <laughs> But uh, here I add a kind of an orangey a light color to the side. Now I'm gonna add some details to the tiles. Um, I make, I just do that by making a slightly darker blue color of ultramarine, and uh, so it, it has a slightly, uh, it's a mixture of ultramarine and a little bit of titanium white. Uh, but it is slightly darker than the tiles itself and uh, well you see I f at first I try to uh, drop in a little bit of these general patterns and then I just try to indicate it a little bit so I don't stick too much to the exact patterns I just drop in some dots and then I just hope that that is good enough and that you get the effect of tiles with a pattern but if you want to do it more precise of course you're welcome to do that that's uh, that's just great if you're a more patient person than i am <laughs> see so dot 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 and that's how i go about it dot 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 
dot dot dot dot and that's how I go about it dot 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 and that's how I go about it dot 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 dot